Thank you, ladies. Isn't the grace of God marvelous? Isn't that good? That what a blessing. Take your Bible, please, and go back to the book of Acts, chapter 6. Look at verse 14. For the Bible says here, For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall, and watch it, and shall change the customs which Moses delivered us. The Bible says, And all that sat in the council, looking steadfastly on him, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. Uh, I want to speak this morning on when Satan attacks the church. When Satan attacks the church. Uh, Forty years ago, I received Christ as my Savior. I know I don't look that old, but I am. And I received him as Savior when I was six months old. I'm just kidding. And so it's hard to believe, but in 2021, I'll reach the age of 60. I, I cannot believe that. Uh, my wife looks at me, I look at her, and I say, it's just incredibly insane. Matter of fact, uh, it's hard for us to believe that we have grandchildren. You know, we still feel young. We still, vi still feel very vibrant, you know, full of energy. So it just doesn't seem like uh, that's going to be the age of uh, understanding uh, for us. Uh, we, we, uh, so and I got married uh, 35 years ago. Uh, I've been preaching now for 37 years. In 37 years, I've seen a lot of changes. 37 years, I've seen a lot of people make decisions. I've seen people that used to be steadfast in the Lord have become compromisers. I've seen people that have become uh, that were compromisers became uh, more steadfast in the Lord. I I've seen our nation change. I've seen a shift in our nation. I think in our nation today, we have the most pro-Christian and anti-Christian uh, platforms that I've ever seen in my life. They're so, they're so diametrically opposed one to the other. I've never seen that in all the years that I've been alive. Uh, but here you'll see, why is it that the church uh, begins to be criticized? Why is it that the church begins to be attacked? Let me give you some statements. Statement number one, uh, because of the kind of church uh, the devil attacks. Uh, the kind of church the devil attacks. Uh, we're going to look at what type of church what kind of church does the devil attack well here you'll see that the devil doesn't attack every church he really doesn't uh, some churches he's already got so he don't need to attack them uh, but you'll see some things about this church uh, let me draw your attention to our bibles that we like to use in verse 1 of chapter 6 you'll see the word multiplied and so the bible says in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied and so here's a church that's under attack now why are they under attack well they multiplied it's getting people's attention when a church begins to grow it draws Draws the public eye and so here it is with this particular church this particular church was beginning to grow and very fastly I might add and as it is growing it draws the attention by the way it draws the attention of the praisers it also draws the attention of the naysayers uh, it draws the attention of those that are saying boy that is wonderful uh, let's praise God for what God is doing and it also draws attention of those that are not for what God is doing and so you see that uh, the kind of church that the devil attacks statement number one uh, that which is a church that is growing it's multiplying then you'll see this he attacks a praying church in verses 4 and 6 verse 4 the Bible says the same chapter Acts chapter 6 in verse 4 the Bible says and we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word and so here those that were uh, the apostles were giving themselves to that which is prayer. They're giving themselves to the ministry of the word. In verse 6, you'll see the same mention here. The Bible says, and they set uh, before the apostles, watch it, now whom they set before the apostles, and when they had laid, it says, or when they had prayed, they laid hands on them, all right? So you see, this is a praying group of people. Uh, well, another thing uh, that God uses to be able to bless churches is churches pray they used to say this it was a motto many years ago the family that prays together help me 
stays together. Well, you know, the same is about the church. You know, as we pray as a church, as we care for each other as a church, as we love each other as a church, as we pray for each other's burdens as a church, it draws us closer together. Well, the devil does not want a church to be together. Uh, the devil wants to be able to divide a church. Uh, the devil wants to be able to cause uh, that which is insurrection or, yea, problems inside of a church. So this church was what? This church was a growing church. This church was a praying church. This church was also a witnessing church. Notice in your Bible, uh, verse 7 and verse 8, the Bible says, and the word of God increased and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. Watch the latter portion of the verse. The Bible says, in a great company of the priest, it says, were obedient to the faith. And so here's people that's even in the religious hierarchy that's coming to Christ. Uh, they're uh, being converted over to that, which is the truth, leaving their mainstay religion. And so this is a witnessing church. They're witnessing the people that are the common people. They're also witnessing the people that's the religious people. So it's a witnessing church. The Bible says in verse 8, and Stephen, full of faith and power, uh, did great wonders and miracles among the people. This is a soul winning church. This is a church where they have a desire to be able to help people. Now, can I tell you uh, that uh, this church is a growing church? It's a church that is a praying church. It's a church that is a witnessing church. Now, by the way, uh, it's easy to do nothing. It's harder to do something. And the more something that you do for Christ, the more that the devil's crowd will try to hinder you, will try to stop you, will try to get in the way of you. Now, may I say that the, the kind of church the devil attacks, it's a growing church, it's a praying church, it's a witnessing church. Uh, by the way, don't be afraid of that. Uh, my Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he's in the world. Uh, my Bible teaches me that uh, God shall supply all of your need according to his riches in glory. So you, so I tell you what, we don't want the devil to attack us, so we're just going to stop growing. If you stop growing, you'll die. Uh, anything that's healthy is going to grow. Uh, little children, grow. Adults, grow. So anything that's healthy is going to grow. So thank God that we have a growing church. Thank God we have a praying church. Thank God that uh, you can go to someone and say, look, would you pray with me about this? They don't slap you upside the head. They don't talk bad about you behind your back. They don't try to criticize you to your face. What they do is say, uh, yes, I'll pray for you. It's a praying church. Then you'll see a witnessing church. I cannot begin to tell you how many people go out soul winning every week. I know that we have at least 200 people that go out soul winning every week at the different times that we go out to give out the gospel and to share the good news of Jesus Christ. I'm not sure how much over that we have, but I know it's at least that much. Now, can I say this? This church was the same. It was a soul-winning church. It was a witnessing church. And, and by the way, uh, it's not that you uh, go soul-winning and you feel fulfilled. I, I, I like to see people that get so bit by soul-winning that they just do not go soul-winning. They become soul-winners. Now, what does that mean? That means you talk to people and you don't have to wait till Thursday or you don't have to wait till a Saturday or you don't have to wait till Sunday afternoon with her men or you don't have to wait till uh, some other type of time that we have slots uh, for people to fulfill that which is the great commission given to the local church. But uh, uh, we're just conscientious about it all the time just conscientious about it all the time uh, just talking to people all the time you know the other day I gave a a, a, a lady a track and as I gave her the track I was in a hurry and so I said I'd just like to give you something to read and read it in your spare time and if I can be a blessing or a help in any way please let me know she said you're a believer I said yeah I'm a believer she said well I'm a believer I said well you're a believer she said yeah she said do you mind if I tell you how I became a believer? I said, no. She said, I very seldom get to tell people how I became a believer. She said, you people. I said, what do you mean, you people? She said, you know, you people. You people from Parkside Baptist Church. You're always coming by my place and giving me gospel tracts. 
And she said, I appreciate it. She said, but I never get a chance. And she said, you're the big dog. <laughs> she said, so I would like to be able to tell the big dog how this little dog got saved. I said, and you go right ahead. She had one of the most glowing, wonderful testimonies of the grace of God that I've heard in a long time. I mean, she was 12 years of age. Uh, her Sunday school teacher cared for her so much that she visited her in the home. She grew up in church, uh, never knowing that she was saved. She was a deacon's kid. And, and I guess the Sunday school teacher just thought, well, if it's a deacon's kid, they don't need to be visited, so therefore I'm not going to visit them. But she said, uh, the husband and the wife came by. Uh, they were my Sunday school teachers. They sat down with me, and my parents sat over there, and my parents listened to them give me the gospel and that day I bowed my heart I received Jesus Christ as my savior and she said pastor she and she got excited she said I am glad I got saved I said I'm glad you got saved too now can I tell you listen the kind of church that the devil attack he's not going to attack a dead church he's already got them he's not going to attack a church that doesn't care anything about getting out the gospel he's already got them he's not going to attack a church that's uh, not a praying church and a caring church he's already got them he's not going to attack a church that's not a growing church that doesn't care about people one thing if you look around in our congregation this morning you see the same thing tonight is uh, we have a what we call a diverse multicultural congregation you say what's that like heaven because in heaven, you're going to see every, <laughs> uh, you know, you have all these uh, movements that's out there. Uh, you know, you got the Black Lives Matter, and then you got the White Lives Matter, and then you probably got the Yellow Lives Matter, and then you probably got the Brown Lives Matter. Can I tell you Jesus' philosophy on it? All lives matter. Amen. And did you know everybody in this room ought to care enough about somebody else to be able to give them the gospel? Everybody in this room ought to love somebody enough to be able to tell them the truth. And can I tell you that uh, the devil hates it uh, when a church is a growing church. He hates it when the church is a praying church. He hates it when the church is a soul winning church. Statement number two. Uh, we see statement number one, the kind of church the devil attacks. Statement number two, how? the devil attacks a church how does he do it i mean is there a method is there a plan is there a, a course of action that the devil takes how does he do it well we know this he wants to hinder the work of the holy spirit uh, he'll do it by uh, sowing seeds sometimes even in the heart of the believers uh, you'll have somebody that will sow the seed of discord you hear somebody say well, i i I agree with everything, but let me tell you this one thing that I disagree with. Well, they have to tell you that. Here's their intention, discord. Uh, you won't agree with everything. Matter of fact, my dear friend, if you'll look in the mirror, you don't even agree with you. Can I tell you, there's the seeds of discord. There's the seed of unrest. There's the seed of criticism. There's the seed of jealousy. Uh, there's the seed, if you would please, of, of uh, uh, being somebody that is dissatisfied. Uh, it, we have to be careful. Why? Because in verse 1, we see what happens after that, and there's murmuring. Uh, you'll see this, uh, that God's servants often will find themselves doing secondary things rather than the priority, primary things. Uh, you'll see that they pick up secondary type of jobs in the church. That's what happened here. The primary job of the 12 in verse 4, you see this. Their primary job in the church was to pray and to preach. That's what their primary job was. But you see that in verse 4 that they're giving uh, the, uh, attention to the secondary, and, and important, and very important, but they're giving more attention to the secondary, which is uh, the benevolence fund, than there are anything else. Now, can I tell you, uh, we have people that's in charge of such ministries and uh, so that the pastor can give himself. You know, I found out years ago that uh, there's only certain things that the pastor can do. But there's many things that others can do. But the pastor has to guard himself to be able to do things that only the pastor can do. 
You know, sometimes there's only the pastor that can counsel perhaps uh, uh, an intense uh, um, struggling marriage. Sometimes only the pastor, if you would please, can be able to get a good hearing with the mayor or with the governor. Sometimes the pastor is the only one that can be able to uh, uh, enter into that which is a long season of fasting and praying uh, for the people that he knows that nobody else knows is struggling in the church. Sometimes the pastor, he is the shepherd. So the pastor is supposed to fulfill the responsibility of the shepherd. Now, can I tell you that here these apostles were uh, taken from, and I thank God for those that uh, helped to mow the lawn, and I thank God for those that helped uh, with the uh, janitorial program to clean the buildings, and I thank God for those that uh, helped with the visitation and visiting the sick and the elderly and the shut-in. I thank God for those that run our nursing home ministries and uh, our 13 bus routes and all the drivers and all of the bus captains and all of the the workers and, and those that have uh, chapel services for us outside of the church on a Saturday night. I thank God for that. Boy, I thank God for those that are part of our educational uh, uh, family and, and they uh, educate our young in our academy. And also, uh, we have uh, 13 different states that's attending our Bible college here thir from 13 different states. And I thank God for every professor that we have that teaches in our Bible college. I thank God for that. But you know, the pastor's got to be able to stay in the focus because if he doesn't what's going to take place is some of the most cheap things uh, becomes the secondary things that takes over his primary focus and then the church of God begins to suffer and so these that were apostles begin to do this very thing uh, by uh, engineering if you would please some things uh, it uh, could uh, uh, cause the gospel not to go out uh, Acts chapter 6 and verse 9 the Bible says this Disputing with Stephen. Now, here are those that uh, are attacking that which is the church. Then the Bible says in verse 11, we heard him uh, speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. What are they doing? Uh, they're on the attack. They're on the attack. They're criticizing. In verse 12, the Bible says that they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and caught him and brought him to the council. In verse 13, the Bible says, and they set false witnesses which said uh, that this man ceaseth not to speak blasphemous words against the holy place and the law. And so what's taking place is the devil now is attacking. Now, don't you thank God that God's people can still come together when the devil begins to attack? I was just so, and I'll say it outright, I was just so very displeased with Beto uh, uh, that said, you know, that, okay, uh, if, if you teach against that which is traditional marriage, uh, when I become president, I'll take away uh, your church tax-exempt status. Uh, can I tell you that preachers are supposed to get up and preachers are supposed to teach the Word of God and preachers are supposed to preach the Word of God and we're supposed to step up and tell what God says to do. And by the way, God is the one that gave marriage and so therefore God is the one and the only one that can give the definition to marriage. Man doesn't have a right to mess that up. Well, I never thought. I just never thought. I'm just telling you how it is. I just never thought we'd have America where all of a sudden uh, people are born and a boy is born a boy. I mean, a boy's a boy, you know. And a girl is born a girl and a girl's a girl, you know. You just can't really mess that up. And, but now in America, they say, well, you know, when they get old enough, they can decide what sex they are. That's stupid. You realize that America is the only country in the world that every other country around the world is laughing at us? I mean, they're laughing at us. They're poking fun at us because they're saying, you mean they can't figure that out? Now, can I tell you, watch this, if you will. And so the devil tries to attack. Now, I say this this morning, the kind of church uh, that the devil attacks. What is it? It's a growing church. What is it? It's a praying church. What is it? It's a witnessing church. How does the devil attack? Sometimes he'll cause dissension among the believers that's inside of the local church, and they begin to murmur, and they begin to complain. Sometimes uh, those that are the pastors of these churches, they get off track. 
You know, they start doing secondary things, and, you know, uh, you'll find them painting rooms, and if they don't have anybody else to do it, then I understand. But can I tell you, uh, there needs to be some people of God that rises up in churches across America and says, I can help do that, and I can help do that, and I can help do that, and the people of God need to rise up and decide that there are many ways for everybody to serve Jesus Christ. Yeah. So, uh, so sometimes the, those that are in leadership will get uh, um, their priorities messed up. Statement number next. Uh, how, how can Satan's power be dwarfed, if you would please, or broken? How, how is it that uh, uh, Satan cannot have full power to be able to go forward? Uh, in verse 7, the Bible says this. The Bible talks about there's three spiritual factors that will overthrow Satan. Statement number one, you'll see in verses three and five, you'll see that there's a spiritual administration. Now, what is that? Well, that means there's spirit-filled men, spirit-filled women that are leading and that are guiding. And can I tell you that you and I ought to be spirit-filled people? I, I had, um, for those that are on salary here, uh, part-time or full-time if they're paid by the church every year I do what I call a leadership retreat these are for people only that are paid by staff uh, paid by our church they work for me and so I have a, a, a leadership retreat and so in the leadership retreat I, I taught many many lessons uh, about how to be able to uh, have people skills and leadership skills and the philosophy of our church and how we go from one area of leadership to another area of leadership and things of this nature. You know, that's a part of being somebody that's an administrator. And by the way, it's far better to be a spiritual administrator than not a spiritual administrator when it comes to the house of God. Statement number two, we see this. We see that there was earnest intercession. Verses four and six, as I mentioned a moment ago, they prayed. There was an earnest intercession. Uh, I, I think that we ought to pray for each other, but pray for those, the Bible says, uh, that uh, are, are those that are kings and governors and whatnot. Uh, pray for those, and pray for those that have the rule over you. Pray for those that are your Sunday school teachers, because at that time when they're teaching the Word of God, they're taking rule to be able to show you what the Bible teaches. Well, pray for them. You know, pray for those that are deacons. Pray for those that help out and that serve here. Then statement number three, you see this. There's a holy demonstration. Now, what does that mean? Verse 15, the Bible talks about how that uh, uh, we ought to have a demonstration of the Holy Spirit. In other words, being spirit-led. Uh, we ought to have that. Now, turn in your Bible, and I want you to see this this morning as we draw our message to a close. Look at the Galatians chapter 5. Look at verse 1. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1. So how can you identify if you are doing that which is in the spirit? If we're supposed to be spirit-led, if the church is supposed to be spiritual, how is it that we can understand what that is about? Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1, the Bible says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty uh, wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. You know, God delivered me. When I got saved, God delivered me. Well, I don't want to go back and be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. So how might I stay free? Look over in verse 16. The Bible says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, that's capital S, Holy Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the lust of the flesh, it says, watch it now, for it says, uh, for the flesh, verse 17, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. These are contrary one to the other, uh, so that you cannot do the things that you would. The old flesh don't like getting up and coming to Sunday school. The old flesh doesn't like coming back to church. The old flesh don't like somebody getting up and hollering and uh, yelling and uh, preaching Bible truth. That rubs somebody the wrong way. The old flesh don't like that. The Bible says, but if you be led of the Spirit, verse 18, the Bible says you're not under the law. Now the works of the flesh, watch it, are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variedness, emulations, Wrath, the Bible says, strife, seditions, heresies, it goes on. 
The Bible says endings and murders and drunkenness and uh, revelings. The Bible says and such like. That means the list continues to grow. The Bible says of which I tell you before and I also told you in times past. Listen, it says that ye shall, uh, it, 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 that uh, uh, they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So he said, wait a minute, uh, these are the works of the flesh. Okay, so wait a minute, here's what you do. Uh, before you comment to your wife when all of a sudden you're under pressure, it would be best to classify, am I going to speak according to the flesh? Or am I going to speak according to the Spirit? Before you say something to that co-worker, go ahead and classify it. Is it going to be flesh? Or is it going to be spirit? Before you get all bent out of shape with somebody that's in leadership, maybe in your Sunday school class, classify it. Is it going to be flesh? Or is it going to be spirit? Now, by the way, God says we're not supposed to fulfill that which is the lust of the flesh. Uh, he mentions the word adultery there. He mentions the word fornication. There. He mentions all these things there. So what's that mean? That means you ought to live a clean life. I tell our kids, it's on these Instagram things. I say, if somebody's living a dirty life, you ought not to like their picture. You say, that's pretty narrow-minded. I'm preaching from a pretty narrow-minded book. So because I'm preaching from a very narrow-minded book and God uh, uh, sees sin as sin, that I think you ought to be the good Christian see it the same way. Amen. Here's what the Bible says. I had three amens there. God bless you. The Bible says in verse 18, but if you let of the Spirit, it says you're not under the law. Now, it talks about the works of the flesh. In verse 19 that I read, in verse 20, I read the works of the flesh. In verse 21, I read the works of the flesh. Now let's get down to that which is the fruit of the Spirit. This is good, and this is honey in the bucket. Look at it, verse 22. The Bible says now, it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. Uh, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh that tells you what to do if you're flesh It says with the affections and lust And it says if we live in the spirit it says let us also walk in the spirit All right now wait a minute and so the Bible talks about how we're supposed to walk in that spirit So here's what we do all of a sudden something comes our way. I ask myself How should I respond if uh, if I'm trying to respond according to the flesh? I know it's not good but if I say, boy, I can do this, I can respond according to the Spirit. The Bible says, and let us not be desirous, it says, of vain glory. So I'm not doing it for myself, provoking one another, it says, or envying one another. I'm supposed to do it for the glory of God. Now, wait a minute, though. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to find out how is it that I can, when the church is being attacked, when the church is being attacked, how am I supposed to respond? What am I supposed to do? Uh, the Bible teaches I'm supposed to respond in that which is the fruit of the Spirit. I'm not supposed to respond in that which is the work of the flesh. So uh, I am going to go out. I'm not going to go out and say, well, I'll tell you what, you know, this and this and this is okay. It's not okay if God says it's not okay. But at the very same time, what am I going to do? I'm going to try and help somebody and encourage somebody. And, and uh, uh, oh, uh, somebody said years ago, uh, mm, uh, love them on the parking lot and let the preacher do the preaching. Well, I think that's good, but I think sometimes we become passive with that. Can I tell you if I'm standing in a grocery line and somebody's cursing up a storm, I'm going to exhibit the fruit of the Spirit and I'm going to say, you know, that's not really the good thing to say. Children around you, you probably just need to shut up. <laughs> now, I might say you might just need to be quiet. Depends on how tall they are. But can I tell you, uh, you know, you ought to be able to stand for Christ. Amen. You ought to be able to speak up. I, I think what is happening in our society is that the Christians are not being vocal enough. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I think it's about time that, uh, by the way, uh, Obama was wrong. And he said, we are not a Christian nation. We were established as a Christian nation. Amen. And we still are. So I think that you ought to take and you ought to decide as an individual that you hold Christian ethics. Amen. Don't be ashamed that you're a Christian. Amen. Practice it now. Do it now. Because you see, Christmas time is coming. Don't, don't, don't. 
people you know at, at d different places they say well you, you go to check out I had fun with this lady one time I went to check out and she said well you know happy holidays I said oh no 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 it's Merry Christmas I said here let me help you you say it with me ready she said well we, we're not supposed to say that in our store I said it's just you I'll help you. You're not saying it. You just repeat. Just, just say, Mary. And she goes, she looked around like, like she's going to be like thrown in prison or something. I said, shh, shh, just, we can whisper. Just say, Mary. She goes, Mary. I said, that part felt good, didn't it? And I said, Christmas. And she goes, Christmas. I said, that felt really good, didn't it? And she said, oh, yeah. So I got my bags, I'm walking off, and she said, hey, sir, sir, Merry Christmas. <laughs> the reason that people don't believe that Christianity is real is because you're making it look like it's not real. It's very real. Hey, what would be wrong all of a sudden uh, that you have somebody at work, it's got a burden, and what would be wrong with you? What would be wrong with you? Uh, to go up to that individual and say, yeah, realize you got a burden. Let me pray with you. Father, thank you for... So we can't do that at work. Who said? I've even seen it at public schools. They say, you're not allowed to pray except for emergencies. Well, you know, it's an emergency if you don't pray for his meal. He's going to choke. I'm, I'm saying this. Bring Christianity back into the public eye. Amen. Don't be ashamed of it. Amen. Just bring it back into the public eye. You don't have to be, um, you don't have to take on the personality. Thank you, Doc. You don't have to be uh, taking on the personality of somebody else. But you can bring it back into the public eye. You kids that go to public school, you could say to your friends, boy, in God good? Thank God is so good. I know I'm going to go to heaven. How about you? Brother Denton's doing a good job, and uh, Mrs. May is doing a good job in helping us get into the public school. We were in the Saxe Public School just a couple of weeks ago and had the privilege to lead uh, uh, several young people to Christ and appreciate that so very, very much. And, and then uh, we have an avenue to be able to get into the public school, and uh, we have nine public schools that's open. And, and so uh, Brother Denton's checking into it, and I said, we want to get in the one that's the most populated. And so he was talking to this particular principal, and the principal, the principal, the principal, the principal, the, the big dog, of the public school told Brother Denton, or, or told the one that said that we're gonna actually uh, try and make a way to be into that public school, the principal with tears said, this is an answer to prayer. We've been praying that somebody would come to our public school for over a year, and now you're showing up. You know, there's good people, good Christians everywhere that's just really praying that God would do a work, but we've gotta do our part. Father, help us as a local...